Do you enjoy the harvest of Missouri through food, fuel, or fiber? Interested in strengthening your community or making a difference in the lives of others? You're in the right place. This is Stand for Ag with Missouri Farmers Care. Join us for thoughtful conversations around the intersections of farmer, rancher, and consumer interests. Grab a seat, press play, and join the conversation. Welcome back to Stand for Ag with Missouri Farmers Care. We are thrilled you've joined us again for an insider conversation about agriculture, all facets of agriculture. And today I am joined by Reagan Buell, the educational director for Missouri Dairy and Hi. Jean Wiseman, newly appointed, newly minted legislative director for the association. So welcome to both of you. Thank you so Thank much you for the much. invitation. Yeah, so Reagan, one of the many hats that you wear in Missouri agriculture is educational director for the dairy industry. Tell us what the dairy industry looks like. Who are you working with on an average day in the state of Missouri? Same to you, Jean. Who are you advocating for? Uh, tell us the, the face and the features and demographics of Missouri dairy. It's an absolute joy to serve dairy producers, grade A dairy producers throughout the state. Uh, we're hovering right around that 450 grade A dairy farms across the state. And my goal is to represent every one of them and, and serve their needs through education, professional development, and providing a positive image throughout the state for them on their behalf. Dairymen are some of the biggest hard, biggest hearted, hardest working. And in a, in the field of agriculture, that's a pretty high bar, right? We're, we are giving, we are hardworking, we are self-sacrificial, but the dairy men and women that I know are the first ones to step up from scooping ice cream in the Capitol Rotunda gene to anything else that agriculture needs. They're there willing to step off the farm and join us. That's correct. As Reagan stated there, they're, we're a small dairy state with 450 plus or minus grade A farms, but dairy, dairy men and dairy women are passionate about what they do. They invest their lives in it. It's like other farming operations where it's a way of life. It's a place to raise their children. It's a place for their family. They're really invested in their small communities. They're invested in their industry and legislatively, they are very vocal. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's been thanks to some legislative partnerships, Gene, that we've held on to the dairy industry that we have, and that I think Missouri, which we can talk about in a little bit, Missouri is trying to position itself well for dairy growth, and we're a great state to welcome new dairies. It is. We are, we are a rural state. We have uh, legislators and, and uh, executive officers in the, in the capital here in Jefferson City who promote agriculture. Uh, agriculture is our number one economy, and we work hand in hand with other commodity groups in the state to promote that agriculture outlet from Missouri. We have a lot of land. Our real estate is of value as compared to other states. Our tax uh, levels are lower as compared to many other states. And we just have an environment here that is inviting for dairymen to stay in business or to grow their business or actually to invite their neighbors to come in and, and dairy alongside. Mm -hmm. We I have know. water. We have water. Yes. So for those that aren't, um, don't see the dairy scene nationally, there are a lot of dairies on the East Coast in Pennsylvania, up North in Wisconsin, but a lot of Arizona and North Carolina based dairies that may not have the abundant natural resources that we have to welcome growth of dairy. That's correct. And, and one of the things that uh, we have to remember is that Missouri not only is diversified in other agriculture crops, we're diversified within the dairy industry itself. Uh, we have operations with as few as 10 cows or less, and we have, we have very few, but we have a few operations that are larger that are in the thousand cow category. So we're not out after that mega operation. We are out to help the dairymen for whatever they, they're looking for, for what they're choosing and we, we want them to be successful here. I've gotten the pleasure of working with um, Kurt Olson from the Missouri Department of Agriculture and leaders from Audrain County, just to name one concrete example that Audrain County was our first agri-ready designated county in this state. And they each, each agri-ready designated counties of the 64 that we have, have a different vision for what would most help them. Some of them it's ports, some it's meat processing. Um, 
Audrain County's vision is we are a great place to dairy. They are inviting people from around this nation to come and see the abundant water, feed, labor, land resources that are located in Audrain County and saying we have a fantastic school, business community, bring your dairy because following those cows, let's talk a little bit about the economic impact of those cows because they're saying following those cows comes the processing and the value added that Missouri welcomes with open arms. Well, that's true. And I'm gonna kick it over to Reagan here in just a second because she talks about that a lot, uh, the different products and how they're useful here in the state. We have, we have a really good processing state. We have uh, four or five large processors in the state Kansas City, Springfield, Jefferson City that supplies fresh milk and, and grade A products, uh, not only through Missouri, but throughout many of the surrounding states. Um, uh, very good uh, at, to work with those, those agencies. We also have a larger processor that's more specified in organics that's located in central Missouri and Columbia. It's very close to Audrain County, the county you were talking about. And uh, that milk actually is not produced in the state of Missouri, but comes in, is processed here. So every job here that is uh, in that plant is actually created to work for milk that's coming into the state and then leaving the state uh, to be sold uh, wholesale and retail in, in other communities east of the Mississippi. So, yeah, it's, it's just a great economy and a great setting. The Midwest is a flyover state for a lot of other areas I know in the United States, but we have a lot going for us here and the economics behind dairy we just bring so many industries with us uh, mechanics uh, welding we have uh, supply companies uh, just all sorts of things processing comes with that trucking companies uh, the opies of this world wdt's which is a very large national trucker uh, that's that's one of their major products that they carry is milk the, uh, the most recent report that we had that looked at dairy manufacturing and the dairy industry and economic impacts stated that, uh, that every single cow that the state of Missouri can procure equates to over $14,000. And as, as Jean was saying, if I could support, it's just there are so many different uh, industries that are supported by the dairy producer. And it's almost as if that that dollar value that they get from their milk check is, is a throughput straight to the, the economy. And I, you spoke on uh, a little bit on how each individual dairy farmer, they really are the salt of the earth. It's such a privilege to work with them and for them because they don't need for much. They don't want for much, but what they, what they have is an asset to our state, and uh, it's such a joy to advocate for them on that behalf. Uh, but most of the industries that we that we do see impacted, uh, you've got your artificial insemination or your semen companies, and we have uh, labor workforce development, and you have trucking, as Jean was saying, uh, forage growth. And so you think about the agronomics, and that's how we find great joy in partnering both with um, corn and soybean, because it just makes sense that we're all working together um, as, a, as a broader picture of agriculture to impact the economic state of Missouri. Yes, and you know, I, coming from the beef industry, I spend a lot of time on that beef side, and that impact can't be overstated either. You know, we have a, this, this country has a huge appetite for lean ground beef, for instance. So we're working at uh, bringing a feeding industry and a processing industry to Missouri because we are so good at the cow-calf industry. But most of that value and most of those cattle leave the state. It is not much different with the dairy industry, right? There is, uh, they, those cows fill a huge need in, in consumers' diets as lean ground beef when they have finished their jobs and their mm -hmm. careers making milk. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I find it still fascinating that much of the prime beef in this country comes from dairy steers or dairy on beef cattle that feed so very well and hit our high end market and our yes. state very delicious. That's a market. I'm so glad that you touched on that because we're working on the educational component of the expo that is scheduled uh, in January of next year. And one thing that we're really going to talk about is the economics of beef on dairy and not only the how to, because I think we're, we're to that point. We understand how to breed a dairy cow to beef. 
the how is not what we really want to look at. We want to look at the marketing opportunities and what does that carcass look like and how can we add that stream of revenue into the pocketbooks of dairy producers so that they can they can find a value to not only the bull calf, but, but to the heifer calf that comes off of that animal that's maybe genetically not exactly where you want it to be. And the, the beauty of it is you see a, an improved genetic uh, impact in your herd. So you're, you're milking a beautiful, efficient herd and trying to be as profitable as possible while also generating this revenue stream of high quality carcasses and and trying to find that niche uh, to complement that high quality carcass. I know that we all stay busy with a drive to continual improvement. Um, and I love to see that progress being made that is often leaps and bounds. You can take leaps and bounds in the dairy industry while our beef herd is catching up uh, with the technologies that are used in reproduction and AI and others. So. It's exciting to see those developments coming through dairy and dairy. So tell us a little bit more um, about, we haven't really hit on the association. So Missouri Dairy, um, Missouri Dairymen have had representation for a long time, but Missouri Dairy itself is fairly new. So tell us the face of this new um, evolved organization. You bet, absolutely. And Jean, if you'd let me, I'll, I'll respond. Uh, we... I, I take great pride in uh, dairy men's interest in, in wanting representation and education. And it was nearly two years ago in January that we got a group of producers from both organizations. And so the previous two organizations was the Missouri Dairy Association and the Missouri Dairy Industry Alliance. January of 19, we got leaders from each uh, each group together and they decided what are the most important topics to them. And they coalesced uh, both of the most important topics for them being education and legislative rep representation. And, uh, and with that was the born of, of the new Missouri Dairy. And there were leaders from each organization that were then placed on the board and the transition uh, transitional board. And with with COVID, a lot of it's been muted, and I'm, I, you know, I sigh. Uh, two years feels like a really long time uh, to go through this uh, development process, but we've created a, a brand new organization and uh, really striving to be the the voice of profitable, positive, and professional dairy producers throughout the state. Yeah, and I think as, as we learn new ways to communicate and just learn the new normal that COVID has presented us, it allows us that opportunity to find out how to work with these dairymen, work with those consumers out there to project what we really do. I think a lot of things, a lot of times consumers don't realize it. We have a product that is wholesome, it's safe, and, and you hear, uh, they can hear about lots of different food safety problems throughout the United States every day. Lots of recalls, lots of things that are happening out there in the food industry. Dairy is very seldom heard of in that because it is so well regulated. The producers care so much about the product that they place out there on, the, on those consumer shelves. It, it's just a great industry to work for and that's why that's why Reagan and I are so passionate. I also love, Jean, just the freshness of dairy. I Correct me if I'm wrong, but the last time I heard a stat is that milk was that's on your grocery store shelf was just at the farm three days ago. That is amazing for um, our food service and, and our grocery store shelves. And that's on the high end too, Ashley, because some of it's even quicker than that because of the location of the dairy farm to the processing plant the time of processing and then out on the shelves, but you're exactly right. Or no more than, than that three days. It's, it's fresh from the mood of you. Yep. The mood of you. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I do as well. And, and I love, you know, the, the more dairies we have in Missouri and the more processing that can follow those dairies, it, the freshness to our, to mid, the Midwesterners that are consuming those products just enhances. So, um, Reagan talked a little bit, Jean, about the goals that our organ the organization came together and formed. So your position is fairly new within Missouri Dairy 
as legislative director, what goals has your producer board set before you uh, for the coming legislative session? Our number one goal is to build those relationships, not only with legislators, but with our own industry and with the other commodity industries in the state, the other agriculture commodity industries. We rely on soybeans. We rely on corn. Uh, those, those two components are our biggest feed components. They're, they're readily abundant here in the state. Uh, and, and we want to work hand in hand with those two industries to find new ways uh, to make our feed feeding more efficient, to produce more milk, to get that milk back out there quicker. Also, the other the other beef and, and pork and the commodity industries out there, hey, we're, we're a partner. Uh, we want people to enjoy meat. We want people to enjoy animal products. We want people to get the message of how safe that is and how we care about the product we put on the shelves. And so it's just a relationship building year for us. Uh, we we want to help one another and and we want to get the word out just building those relationships telling who missouri dairy is why we're here and what we want to do if we would get your producer board and the many producers that are represented by them at home that are on the farm um, i think every legislator would keep dairyman's interest top of mind right it's pretty easy story to tell because it is such a good story for missouri economically um, for the people that they represent, they are the people that you absolutely sell to the earth that are home working hard. And as you said, Reagan, all of us in agriculture are pretty good at um, being economic generators, economic engines, but probably no more than um, the fairly labor intensive and feed intensive dairy industry that has a lot of revenue circulating around those farms. And so, Gene, I think that you uh, maybe don't even have your work cut out for you. You'll just be able to highlight the story and <laughs> help those legislators understand uh, uh, geographically. So, so picturing, you know, there's a big conversation going on right now with redistricting in the state of Missouri. Tell me what, what the dairy industry looks like geographically across the state of Missouri. I can, I'll start out, Reagan, and I'll let you follow up, but Reagan actually is in the, the uh, heavy, heaviest populated dairy area of the state. Uh, early settlers in the state of Missouri uh, were many of German influence, and uh, that southern Missouri area uh, appealed to them because it looked like the areas that they had uh, migrated from. So we have a lot of our early dairymen uh, of German heritage that set up in south Missouri. Now we we they were smaller farms and they're further away from the uh, feed sources uh, that are located more in the central and northern part of the state in the boot heel. So uh, as time went on, dairy has expanded through the state, and we have the larger dairies are sort of in the northern part of the state, the central part, whereas the smaller dairies in the south part. So we have fewer but larger dairies in the northern part, smaller and a lot more in the southern. And I would, I would echo that sentiment that the way we district uh, our organization was based off of the number of grade A dairies and we plotted them out and we tried to spread the concentration out a bit. So we, we found ourselves districting a north, a central, southwest and southeast. And we have representation on the board from each district. Um, and, and that's that likely is not in direct alignment with the redistricting on the legislative side, uh, but definitely what, what represents our industry best on, on the Missouri Dairy Organization side. I love the picture you paint stepping back a couple hundred years, Gene, with the um, German immigrants coming and settling in. You know, those, those German immigrants also brought a wine culture to the state that we've highlighted. We've had conversations about cheese and wine on this podcast. and. Uh, that's a pretty good pairing too for that uh, Missouri made product. <laughs> you often see those two products, that cheese plate and that Missouri wine go hand in hand. Oh, we don't deny that. And we, we, we absolutely love that uh, union of, of products and promote that as much as we can. You bet you, uh, Wolf, uh, wine was one of the grapes and wine or one of the uh, commodities I, I failed to mention earlier on, but that, that's a really good relationship that we have with them. It's a great pairing. Absolutely. So on that consumer side, where is it possible to go find Missouri made dairy products? I, I see some on my grocery store shelves, right? Some locally bottled 
um, nor in my case, Northern Missouri bottled milk that makes it to the grocery stores across the state. I've heard that there's some great cheese makers and tasted some great cheese from Central Missouri. On the consumer side, if you're looking to support Missouri dairy on that side, where should consumers look to? Missouri Department of Agriculture has a uh, great program in their uh, Ag Business Development Division. And that's it's called the Agri Missouri Program, and uh, that Agri Missouri Program has a list of, of different uh, producers or processors through the state, and some of those are really good cheese makers. Also, uh, at the Missouri Department of Agriculture, the State Milk Board has a group of producer processors who either process their own milk into fresh milk to be sold around the state or into cheese or yogurt or other products such as that too. So those are two places that uh, you can go. And of course, many of these producer processors are very good marketers. Uh, amazing to me how some farmers become very good at marketing as well. And so you'll see those folks uh, marketing their products at uh, local, even statewide, some catalog I know there's a couple of catalog uh, companies right here in the state that feature meat products that also carry some of our producers' cheeses now. So, and some of the wineries are also featuring uh, cheese product. Wonderful. Jean and I date ourselves a little bit, Jean, because I also refer to the, refer to the program as Agri-Missouri, but I think it is Missouri grown. Yes, I will someday <laughs> rebrand re my brain so that it is the Missouri grown product. And there's a directory online um, just like you could find some meat processing directories. So that is a great resource and a great place to go that is broken out. You can, I think, search within a certain geography of your zip code. So you can find hyper local products. Absolutely. That's right. Thanks. Thanks for correcting. <laughs> Anytime. That's what I'm here for. Anytime. And Reagan, in your part of the state, I think, uh, there's some, there's some really good producer processors down there and, and uh, they have their they have their products available. I think in, in many cases that on-farm processing is some of the, it's a fun story about the next generation coming in and where they, in many cases, I, rather than promoting one brand over the other, but if I think through on, on most of the on-farm processing, where the story was, this is our farm and this is what we're comfortable milking. This is what we're capable of, of raising sustainably. How can we bring this next generation in and afford that opportunity? And so a lot of times that looks like a conversation of value added. And, um, and that's where you start to get your cheese production or bottling. Uh, but I would also like to remind that uh, dairy was local before local was cool, you know, and uh, with Highland milk being right here in our backyard, in many cases, like you were saying, that that milk was probably on a Missouri dairy um, two days ago. And, and uh, if you are ever wondering if this is any consumers listening in or even ag friends, look at your gallon of milk and there's a plant stamp dated on there uh, right next to the expiration date. And you can look up and see where your milk is from. Was it processed in the state of Missouri? And that uh, that's kind of a fun little trick. You go to where'smymilkfrom.com and you key in that number and you'll you'll learn a lot of times that gallon of milk that you picked up is is right here from Springfield. I'm going to be heading to the fridge and checking that out, Reagan. Yeah. That's a fun. Where's my milk? Dot, where's my milk? Say it one more time. For me. Dot com. Yep. Dot com. Where's my milk from? Dot com. Dot com. Okay. I'm going to be checking that out. That is fun. We talk a lot in agriculture about consumers being interested in where their food is from. That that's a driving value for Missouri consumers. So the dairy industry has already made it easy, knowing if that's processed there, it is probably chucked in from that surrounding geography, and uh, that's very one of the many ways in which the dairy industry is meeting those consumer interests and demands and being pretty progressive. So we hit on the expo earlier, and we talked about uh, speaking of being progressive. Continuing education is something that we're all after all the time in our in our continual quest for continuous improvement. So on the sustainability side, on the production side, on the reproduction side, agriculturalists, dairy farmers and others are scientists. And so mm -hmm. tell us about this expo is really geared towards those partners, processors and producers. Tell us about your expo. 
We're looking to return back to Springfield, Missouri at the Oasis on January 22nd of 20, 21st, 2021. Oh, that's a tongue twister. Uh, and, and we're excited about getting folks together back in person and having a, a fairly comprehensive trade show and giving guys the opportunity to, to learn directly from the industry and in both breakout sessions, but also just in personal conversations and not only from the industry, but from each other. Um, and, and having that opportunity, we've, we've actually reduced it down to one day. So that hopefully will encourage more people to come in that one moment so that we can engage with each other and communicate about about what's worked for them the last year? What are some challenges that they have so that we can target our programming throughout the year going forward um, to make sure that we're serving those needs? Last summer, we had an informational session, a field day about sorghum sedan grasses and looking at, can that forage fill a void for us? Can we look at the quality of those forages for, for dairy? And, and a lot of the hybrids have really changed. And, and we got to understand and be on the, the cutting edge of these different changes throughout the industry so that uh, we can maintain profitability and in tight margins. That got me thinking as you're talking about um, all of the research and innovation that is going on industry-wide. One of our recurring themes of our conversation on Stanfrag is the need for labor, job training. Um, what are the career opportunities? We often partner with community colleges or others in job training and recruitment. Can you just list off a quick list of some of the many job opportunities that, that are either in or support the dairy industry? Oh my goodness, there are so many. Um, the, the very first that come to mind are boots on the ground, right? Every single day, we need milkers, we need feeders, we need um, crop producers, we need calf rearers. But once you get outside of that first intimate ring of of the farm, then you have the processors, uh, you have equipment manufacturers, you have equipment maintenance, um, you have both on the on the cropping side of things, you have the hybrids and so the plant breeders, and you look at, um, uh, I mean, even as distant as, as weather, uh, and the folks that are bringing NOAA uh, to us and, and understanding those graphics and, and the radar, it, it is so tremendous. There, there are so many different touch points that dairy amplifies through. Uh, it's hard to even quantify all of them, even if you had a, a four page list in 12 point font. Yeah, I think uh, Reagan's right. It just expands so much. Uh, nutrition, nutritionists, mm -hmm. uh, school dietitians, uh, lab technicians, uh, regulatory people. Um, again, leaning on that food safety, we, we rely heavily on food safety and we track, we're one of the most traceable products uh, in, in the United States. We trace right back to the farmer every step of the way through our regulatory process. So there's a need for really technical people, chemists, truckers, mm -hmm. and they have to be chemists in themselves because they have to conduct tests as well out there. So lots of people. I think if I could distill it back down to the workforce and the daily dairy troopers, I think there is so much opportunity for workforce development and gaining um, that sense of of need. In, in many cases, regardless of what your educational background is, I think every single human on the planet desires to be needed. And there's nothing more obvious of your need than a herd of cows looking at you saying, it's time to milk. Uh, and so you're you are needed every 12 hours like clockwork for the next 365 days every single year. And I think there's a lot of opportunity to, to serve different groups throughout the state. And, and we're hopefully working on developing some workforce development programs for the industry to serve and fill that void. Um, and, and that's something that I'm really passionate about because I know that the dairy industry could, could help fill their heart. Yes. Absolutely. Missouri Farmers Care will be with you every step of the way. Awesome. Because we agree. Workforce. There are so many opportunities in agriculture. You know, we start with our ag education on the move. We, that's third graders. 
we spend a week talking about careers in ag because you're exactly right. Finding your fit in the world, one, often starts really early. And two, there is nothing more fulfilling than providing care for those that are truly dependent on you. And that is mm-hmm. exactly right on the dairy cow side. Any other points that we haven't hit in this conversation? I think I have one final question, but is there are there anything that we have not included in this conversation, Gene? I think uh, one of the things that I've, I learned early on when I started working with dairymen uh, more than 20 years ago was that dairymen are, are folks that receive a paycheck every two weeks. We call it their mailbox check. Uh, so it, it's, it's, it's a cycle that they get paid, which is very attractive to, to young people that's looking for a place in agriculture. It's not waiting until the end of the year to receive a paycheck from that crop that's been there all year, but it's every two weeks, there's a cash flow. And so I think it's, uh, and we have, we have a lot of young people that want to come back into dairying. I think that's one of the things we're gonna look at in this next 12 months is how can we, how can we work with legislators and with departments of agriculture, United States, USDA and others to find programs that will help young farmers get started in dairying that they want to go into with their family. That's wonderful. So the, the conversation, I had a great, I had a trip um, to an ag processor in the last few weeks and I got to interact during that trip with several consumers, the people that we all want to sit and talk with that have no connection to rural life. And so I was explaining the realities on our beef cattle operation on uh, the labor that is needed the capital intensity of farming and agricultural in general, particularly with land prices uh, where they have been trending recently. And so we had, but how much we love it. And it came back to the question that consumers all eventually ask us when they see the reality of ag is that, why do you do it then? What (laughs) keeps you going? And so no one lives this story more completely than a dairyman that is needed Mm -hmm. on farm. My cows do take care of themselves most of the year, right? They're out grazing that big solar panel that's a grass pasture that I have. Um, Dairy cows are on a high plane of nutrition and are more um, labor intensive and do need more care. So what do you hear from your dairy farmers when they're asked that question? How does the dairyman answer? Why do you do it? It's their therapy session. Being around cattle (laughs) soothes your mind and nothing better than going into the dairy parlor, watching those cows come in, wanting to be milked, wanting you, the dairyman or the dairy manager, the milk manager, they want people, they love people interaction and it's good times for us just to lay back and enjoy. You're right. They're peaceful. They're content. They are satisfied chewing their cud. You're right. It is a whole different um, vibe than the stresses of, of daily life. Reagan, what do you hear? Absolutely. I, I also hear in my women in dairy group, I get to hear the perspective of it and maybe the the phase of life and how you how you raise a family. And, you know, if you think about the challenges of, of being on a farm, and I think this is regardless of farms, uh, dairy or otherwise, all all agriculture, raising children on farms, give them that unique opportunity to experience it, challenges and overcome those challenges. And they could be minuscule little challenges. For example, when I was milking my cow this morning with my 11 year old, we couldn't find the halter for a split second. She was like, can't find the halter. I wasn't around. She solved that problem. And she solved that problem independently of herself. And those are problem solving solutions that she will have forever for her life. And so I think the ability to rear children in a problem solving arena, um, gives everyone an opportunity to give pause and recognize that they're giving back to their family um, through their farm. And that that makes it feel different and better. You know that you're creating that, that grit and resilience that will make them a better human. Absolutely. And that empathy and care for mm-hmm. animals, which translates to a, our broader community. It's huge. Yes, it is. I was just listening last night. This is no plug for this particular song, but that song by Jordan Davis that's called By Dirt. 
And it talks about exactly that, that life is fleeting, but this is a great place to put down roots. And so you can't buy happiness, but you can buy dirt. And I think you can yeah. say you can buy happiness, but you can buy cows. That's um, right. If we make avenues possible for young dairymen to get in and keep supporting our dairy industry, uh, you can't buy happiness, but you can buy cows and none more peaceful than those human loving dairy cows, Jean, uh, that you get to be with. So I think that sums up pretty well why our dairymen keep working hard in the state um, and are the economic engines that they are. Uh, sometimes self-sacrificially is that it's that deep abiding peace and happiness and contribution that they're able to make that brings them back in the barn in the dark uh, this time of year twice a day so this has been a wonderful conversation with both of you thank you for the work you do thanks for your partnership in missouri farmers care um, agriculture stands together and so you've heard that in this conversation Jean and reagan have both mentioned several other facets of missouri agriculture that we're all supporting each other. Um, it takes the entire village to make this happen and to feed a growing population and do it in a way that is environmentally friendly, sustainable, and meeting consumer demands and needs, which are ever-changing. And so ag keeps working towards that. And um, a thanks to you, Jean and Reagan. On behalf, you're representing all those dairymen that are at home. And so really a true thanks to them for what they are doing and the pillars that they are in their communities. Thank you for joining the Stand for Ag podcast with Missouri Farmers Care. We're excited to bring you new stories each week. We as agriculturalists have a lot of stories to tell. Stories of resilience, grit, and stories of families that are united by their passion for agriculture. Each week, tune in for a new episode and join the conversation.